Welcome everyone to another chess video. In this video, I'm going to teach you the Petrov's defense, which is another opening, and we're already at the board, so let's get to it. We have e4, a standard move to attack the center, uh, very often played, e5. A uh, uh, very often response, uh, you'll get this response often, you'll get e6, you'll get e5, or you'll get uh, c6 sometimes, and c5 most usually more than c6. The Karakhan, the Sicilian, and the French. But we're not discussing those right now, we're discussing e5. We have e5, and knight f3. Knight f3 to attack e5, and knight f6 in response to attack our pawn. So we don't have moves like d6, like the Philidor, and we don't have moves like knight c6, which is the king's knight variation, which usually is met by bishop c4 or bishop b5, like the Rui Lopez or the uh, Italian game. But we meet knight f3, uh, sorry, knight f6. Knight f6 to attack the pawn, and we are attacked here. So white attacks black, and black attacks white, uh, obviously. Okay, so the main line, the classical variation, goes uh, knight takes e5, then we have usually d6 to push the knight back, the knight back to f3, and then just now knight takes e4. So I would like to discuss with you a trap that white can make if black is not careful, and if black does not know the Petrov's defense, and then how black can not, can avoid this trap. And I actually just told you, but we'll you'll see. So, as white, you should, I recommend taking the pawn immediately, and then if they don't play moves like d6 or queen e7, say they take e4. So they just continue mirroring, mirroring your moves. Then, what you need to do is attack the knight with your queen. So, as black, you may not, may not see any danger. You may see, okay, I'll lose a bit of tempo. I'll just move my knight and continue playing chess. Well, you're wrong as black because knight g5, for example, then what happens is a discovery. The king can be put in check if the knight moves. So, you may say, okay, the knight there, that doesn't really matter. But the knight can have another place where it is really venomous, and try to find it. Okay, if you found the move knight c6 as white, knight c6 is usually a move played by black to develop this knight, but knight c6 as white, and this discovers check to, to the king from the queen, and it also hits the black queen. So now, we have to deal with check, and we have to deal with the queen. Unfortunately, we cannot deal with both in the same move, so we have to block. After we block, we'll take the knight. And we will be winning, by a lot, in the first three moves of the game. There you go, that's white's little trick. Now you may ask some questions about this trap. You may ask, why don't we block like this? Yes, you can still take. You may also ask, if you're a beginner, why can't the pawns take? Well, I'll try taking and it'll say that the black king is in check. And in chess, if the black king is in check, you have to block immediately, okay? So the pawns cannot take, the knight cannot take, and nothing can take because the king is under threat. So once we have a block, even if we have a block from the queen, we still get to pick up the queen, then we take, we stop their castling rights, and we're going to probably win this game. So that's the trap. Now how to avoid it? Well, the easy way to avoid it is actually wait before we go to how to avoid it we need to see one more line if we take if we play queen e2 and you might say well i'll just i'm just going to defend it with a pawn i'll just play f5 uh, probably actually d5 so i'll play d5 and defend it there now if i i won't have to move it because if you take my knight i'll just take it with a pawn so we don't get that we don't want to do this because this is not not good because it'll have d3 so d3 hits the knight twice, it's only defended once, even if you defend it again, you're still going to lose material because you'll take and take, and then you'll have lost two points because the knight is worth three and the pawn is worth one, so that is why you do not take. So, how to avoid it, as black, you don't take. You don't take e4 immediately. You'll probably want to take if white takes e5, but you have to do it slowly. You have to play d6 first to kick the knight back, and then you can take. So now. If the queen hits the knight, then you can defend it. You, can de you can't you can actually move the knight because you'd be putting yourself in check. As but the this knight doesn't have a place to go anymore to hit the queen. 
So, you might play a move like the bishop here. Actually, sorry, no, you wouldn't. You would probably play like queen e7. The problem I, I found out just right now with uh, bishop e7 is you can still just take. So, actually, don't do that. Sorry about that. Don't do queen uh, bishop e7. That would obviously lose you three points. So, defend the knight. You can defend the knight like that. You can even defend the knight like this because there's no more of those nasty traps with the knight. So, you're welcome. I taught you how to defend the trap as black and how to make the trap as white. So, now let's discuss some standard moves with no uh, ginormous traps. Let's back it up to here. Okay, so, knight f6. We can reach several things. For example, we can reach d4. We can reach d4 if black doesn't want to take the knight immediately. Uh, sorry, if white doesn't want to take the knight immediately, we'll have... Uh, d4. We can have moves like e takes d4, and we can have moves like e, uh, knight takes e4. So, for for e takes d4, we could have um, moves like e5 to attack the knight, and we could have moves like uh, knight takes d4 immediately. So, knight takes d4. We could have queen takes d4. These are, I'm just giving you a ton of options for how to play good chess playing with the Petrov's defense. You could have also e5. So e5 hits the knight, and the knight would have to move back. The knight can move here, but then you will still get to gain the pawn later and defend this pawn. So just something to look out for. You may want to push e5 to hit the knight and then get to take the pawn later. Not immediately, you might want to hit the pawn first to be able to defend it with your queen and get your queen out in the center, attacking center and all that standard stuff. So that's if we hit d4. If we hit other moves, for example, like defending our defending our lovely pawn here, we could hit bishop d3. If we hit bishop d3, this is not very recommended for white, because it's just a little bit strange. A move I recommend for white is a move like knight c3. Knight c3 is the three knights game of the Petrov defense, because we have defended the pawn. So what almost often follows is knight c6, which defends our pawn, and now we don't have the Petrov's defense anymore, we have a four knights game, and that's not what we're talking about. So knight c6 will be discussed no further, get out of there, and we have knight c3. Knight c3 is a three knights game, we can reach things like uh, bishop b4 to hit the knight, and then threatening to lose the pawn. So what we can do in this position, we can do several things. We can defend the pawn, and then sacrifice uh, doubled pawns, which I have a video on doubled pawns if you want to watch it. It's called a Bad Pawn Structure, if you want, I'll put a link there. Anyways, what we have is we could sacrifice our bat to get pa bad pawn structure if we just want to double our pawns, and we would still have a nice defense on the pawn, though, That if we don't want it to be taken. If we hit bishop... Uh, c5, if you with bishop b4, sorry, and you don't want to sacrifice your pawn, then what do you do? You don't want to sacrifice your pawn structure, you could immediately take. If you immediately take, though, you would still sacrifice your pawn structure, so, but you could immediately take to not lose the pawn. You wouldn't lose the pawn, because after you take, sorry, after you take, then maybe if they want to take your knight to eliminate your defense of the pawn, then they can very well do that, or they could hit your knight, and then you would move it back, and then they would they would attack here, and then they'd gain your pawn back. So, it, we're probably going to lose the two e, e pawns in the beginning of the game, so just something to say there about the Petro's defense. Alright, let's back it up a bit, if we don't have knight c3. If we don't have knight c3, then I don't see anything else, really, to do as, as uh, white, as what I recommend. Uh, takes, or I recommend knight c3, or I recommend d4. Those are the three things we discussed. Now for black. Let's swap the board here nicely. For black, let's look at the responses for white. So for white, we have knight c3, right? To defend the pawn, and it's attacked. So as I said earlier, knight c6 is a good response to defend our pawn, and then we'd have to probably develop our bishops, and we'd get into a quite a symmetrical game, which some people complain that the four knights game is a little drawish. But we're not here. After knight c6, you're on your own unless I do another video on the four knights game. So, say they don't play knight c3. Say we have something like d4. For d4, I usually like to recommend taking here, taking here, or playing d5. So we have a nice big center, both, sorry, 
we have a nice center. All the pawns are in the center. The center is completely occupied. We're gonna have we're gonna have things like this. We're gonna have crazy openings, opening things like we're gonna have takes here, for example, takes takes. We're gonna have some crazy stuff. So you may take here. Okay, sorry, that's just crazy. Um, oh yeah. Okay, never mind that. That was just a little funny. Forget all of that. Uh, after d4. Uh, after d5, sorry, we this is a very crazy position. All the four pawns are in the center. It's going to be hard to calculate. So I don't really recommend d5. After d4, I recommend taking here or taking here. Okay, so so taking here, we may hit attacks like uh, attacking the, the knight, and then we don't have to worry about that that attack that we learned with the knight and the queen, where we put the king in check and then win the queen, because the knight is there. The knight's not here to then be able to go there. The knight is safely on f3, so we can move the knight back without any problems. So then if they want to put you in check, then that's fine. You can defend, and you can defend the knight at the same time from be doubling your pawns, although the queen would probably not want to take if it's a wise, uh, good old queen. So, yes. Those are the responses I like playing to people who play d4. So you could also have uh, e takes d4. So after e takes d4, you might move, meet moves like queen takes. And to queen takes, I usually recommend knight c6 to hit the queen immediately, make them lose tempo, and continue developing. So if you don't, if you don't get uh, queen takes in your games, you may uh, get knight takes. If you get knight takes. Then I wouldn't recommend this anymore because then they could take and double your pawns, and I don't want to get doubled pawns. So I could recommend moves like bishop c5. Bishop c5, you could have knight takes, and you could have d5. So let's look at those. You could have bishop c5 to hit the knight, then it's defended, but it puts pressure on the knight. So that's something to see. Put pressure, put, it puts pressure on the knight, and yes. After that, we could have moves like uh, knight c3, and we'd have to continue playing the game of chess. So, if we don't want that, if we want to take, then still be prepared to meet uh, your doom after this, and then you can't move it, so you'd probably want to defend it, and then they may play this and attack you, but then you would just take, so never mind, don't meet, be prepared to meet your doom as black. Uh, taking Taking the pawn is perfectly fine. I just had a little miscalculation there. So if you take the pawn, then you could meet things like the queen taking, for example, uh, the queen attacking you. You could have queen e2. After queen e2, what do you do as black? Well, what I like to play is usually an attacking the center move, so like d5 to still defend the the still defend the knight. If you meet f3, then you can have bishop c5 and just continue defending your knight and putting Oh, sorry. No, you wouldn't want that. Uh, that's that's very strange. Sorry, I'm having a couple mistakes here. Please um, help out. So, um, just forgive me for that. So, you could have um, other moves. Like, you may just have to sacrifice your knight. You could have moves like bishop c5 to hit that knight. So, then if they take, you can take. And then you could still have hope as black. So after you take and you decide to defend with d5, as soon as they play f3, you, there's nothing you can do about this knight. You shouldn't try to defend it again with like f5 because you would lose material. So what you'd want to do is attack the other knight. Uh, sorry, not f5. You would want to attack the other knight. So then when they take, you can take. Even if they decide to take here with check, you'll just defend. And then they can take, and we can continue playing. You may not be able to castle. You may have to bring your rook here and manually castle. That's totally fine. Sometimes you have to do that. And that is my overview of the Petros defense. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Play the Petros defense as white. Try it for that little queen stack there. Most people will know about it, so it may not work in all the games. Probably won't. So then you're just going to have to play chess after you get into the next few moves. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Bye.